what is survival analysis is to measure lifespans of individual uh, modeling and analyzing survival rate, which is the likely to survive, and the hazard rate, which is the likelihood to die for a population. Um, let's start with an example. Here we load a data set from the Lifelines data set package. Uh, I only looked at 21 observations here, so we can do some uh, manual counting by hand. Uh, so the structure of the data is it has two columns, T and E. T is the duration of the lifespan, uh, which, which can be calculated as the uh, the end time frame of the event minus the start time frame of the event. Uh, e represents event observed. Uh, so it could be uh, this person has not died yet, uh, or this person has left the study and we don't know the status of the event. In those cases, uh, E would be zero. Uh, this is another word for right censoring. So if we don't know this person, if this person has died or not, or uh, this person is still living at this age, uh, so this, is, this, this person's data will be censored. A summarized way to um, represent this data is to use the survival table from events, um, this function. Uh, here just summarized uh, the data for us. So at the beginning, we have 21 um, individuals. Uh, they're both, they're all at risk for the event. And they all could die at any time. And at um, age 33, one person was observed died. Uh, that's why um, this person is removed at this stage. Um, entering this stage, we still have 21 participants. And at the next stage, the age 54, because we removed these participants, we only end up with 20 participants. And we observed two person die. Two person died at this stage. And then the next day, two people were censored, uh, or uh, we didn't observe the death event, and nine people died. That's why 11 uh, is going to get removed from this stage. The most basic statistics of uh, survival analysis is uh, Kaplan Meyer estimate. Um, the D here is the number of death events at time t. And here's the number of subjects at risk of death prior to time t. Um, so we can calculate this by hand uh, using our uh, survival table. Um, for example, the survival rate at age 32 is just 1 minus uh, d is 1, and n here is 21. Uh, it's very easy to calculate. You can see how this is calculated for each stage. Uh, we can also use the lifelines package um, to use the Kaplan-Meier fitter function to calculate the survival rate at each stage. Uh, you can see we, uh, we basically get the same thing uh, when we calculate by hand or if we just use the package. Uh, we can also plot the survival function to show us um, how this decreased over time. Uh, the second statistics of survival function uh, is called Nielsen-Allen uh, estimator. This is to calculate the hazard rate instead of um, the survival rate. Again, we can use this table and then we can calculate um, based on this equation and the number in the tables. Um, again, this is one observed over 21 people at risk. And actually add them up together, so this is the cumulative uh, survival hazard, uh, hazard rate. And again, we can use the nelson Allen fitter uh, from the package to get us a nice table here which is the same as I uh, calculated before. You can also plot this function. 
so those two estimators are uh, univariate and non-parametric. Uh, they are simple to calculate and interpret, but there is no functional form, so we can't um, fit it, fit in, uh, fit any distributions on it. Uh, that's what we want to do next. Uh, is the exponential model. The exponential model is uh, based on the Poisson process, uh, which is about events that occur independent over time with a constant event rate lambda. Um, so for this Poisson distribution, uh, it, it models how many occurrences happened in time t, uh, but for exponential distribution, it models how much time goes by until event occurs. Uh, the CDF uh, is written as this, uh, which represents the probability of not surviving past time t, which is exactly the opposite of survival function. Uh, so the survival function is simply 1 minus uh, the CDF of exponential distribution uh, with this form here. Uh, if we use the exponential fitter from the package, uh, again, we can uh, get the results really easily. Another model that was used a lot is the Weibull model. So the Weibull mo distribution is the general case of exponential distribution um, with the special factor rho. When rho is less than 1, the event rate or the failure rate decreases over time. When the row equals to 1, the failure rate is, consist is constant, uh, which is the same as the exponential distribution. And when the row is smaller than 1, uh, the failure rate increases over time. I mean, bigger than 1. Sorry, there's a typo. Uh, when this is bigger than 1, the failure rate is increased over time. Again, so our survival function can be written as 1 minus the uh, CDF of the Weibull distribution here. In the package, we can use the Weibull fitter um, to fit uh, our data. Uh, there are many more other kinds of parametric models. Uh, so how do we select our model? There are two ways, basically. We can do a QQ plot. Um, to see how our model fit the data, or we can use AIC uh, to see uh, which model fit is better. In this case, Weibull model fits our data better uh, because the AIC is smaller. Uh, the next part uh, of this video, I want to talk about survival regression. Uh, here's our data again. In this example, uh, I'm just creating a random variable uh, called female. It has a, a random choice of 0 and 1. Uh, 1 representing female, 0 representing male. Uh, to predict uh, the, uh, the hazard rate. So the feature can be categorical, like the female here, or it could be continuous. Um, but for categorical variables, they have they have to be uh, dummy coded and having a reference group. And here the reference group for us is male. Uh, the basic form for survival regression is, uh, is this. Hazard equals the exponential of the combination of um, axis and uh, coefficients. For exponential, exponential model, um, B0 is constant. Um, for Cox proportional hazard model, B0 becomes the natural log of B0t, which can fluctuate over time. If we uh, just add this into the model, uh, the hazard rate, the hazard can be written as this form. Um, B0t represents baseline hazard. Uh, which can vary over time. Uh, the exponential of the rest of the uh, the, the combination of uh, coefficients and features 
is called partial hazard. It's time invariant. It doesn't change over time. Um, the advantage of using Cox's pro, um, proportional hazard model is that it can fit survival models without knowing the distribution. Um, because for survival analysis, our data is right censored or sometimes left censored, uh, so which means we doesn't we don't have all the data at hand. Uh, it's really hard to fit a distribution when we don't have all the data points. Uh, so it's great to use this model because it doesn't assume a distribution. It is great for estimating uh, covariance effects and hazard ratios, so the BI here. Uh, but it doesn't estimate B0T. That's why we cannot estimate survival rate and hazard rate at any time point. Uh, the biggest assumption of Cox proportional hazard model is that the hazards are proportional. Hazard ratios between two subjects is constant. Uh, there are several tests you can do to check this assumption. Um, and there are several fixes we can do. You can add nonlinear terms, um, being the variable, add an in interaction term with time, uh, stratification or add time varying covariates. Um, but one article mentioned that there are legi the legitimate reasons to assume that all data sets will violate the proportional hazard assumption. Um, especially for data with, uh, with larger data sets. Uh, so maybe we may not need to care about this assumption at all. Um, you can read, read on this article and decide whether you need to um, be serious about this assumption or not. So here we can use a Cox PS, PS fitter uh, to fit our data. Uh, from the results, two things to point out is the hazard ratio is, is the exponential of the coefficients, uh, 3.2, uh, which represents that for any given time, female subjects are two time, uh, three times two as likely to die as, female, as male subjects. Uh, the p-value here is um, 0 0.2, 0 0.02, which is less than 0.05 which means the effects of female is significant is significantly different from zero uh, so which means female does have an effect here. Um, there are several time varying models um, we, can, we can implement uh, in timelines as well. Um, you can read up on the uh, tutorials on how to implement those. Uh, and finally, how do we fit a model and select our model? Uh, the first thing we can do is to see the survival probability calibration plot. It compares the simulated beta, data based on your model and the observed data. So basically, it just tells you how your model fit or not fit with the real data. Uh, we can use um, this function uh, to implement this plot. The second way is that we can compare model fit statistics. For each model, uh, we can see the, the concordance, uh, AIC log likelihood, uh, ratio test, actually, yeah. So basically, we're looking at the AIC value and the log likelihood value. Uh, the smaller AIC is better, and the larger log likelihood value is better. Right, and larger concordance uh, index is better. 
We can also do out of sample validation, within sample validation, and cross validation um, with our data. Um, finally, those are all the references I uh, have used. Uh, this is a great video tutorials. Um, there are all, several of them on survival analysis, uh, the lifelines. Um, uh, docs are amazing. I encourage you to read it. Mm, thank you. Bye.